Hi everyone, my name is Ajmal Mushtaq and today I'm going to be giving you three takeaways from my company Boss Pizza. Um, the first thing we're going to do is establish if we've got anything in common. I sell pizza uh, and there's a range of businesses here. Have we got anything in common? We'll find that out. I'm going to talk about myself for 30 seconds and then the rest of the time I'm going to be giving you tips about your organisation and how you can improve the marketing in your business. So, um, first things first, I sell pizza. There is me up there. I've got some people and I've got some customers. What on earth have we got in common? And the answer is everything. Every single business in the world runs on exactly the same principles. And the big mistake a lot of people make, they think, oh, they're an accountant. No, they're not a businessman. I'm a lawyer. No, I don't need to know about business. Every single business has all of these elements and the fact that I sell pizza or you sell accountancy service or you sell insurance is not even the tip of the iceberg. So we've got everything in common. Everyone in this room has got everything in common. Right, 30 seconds about me, let's go. Ajmal Mushtaq studied at Glasgow University, three degrees, law, two in masters, one in finance, one in management accounting. Spent 10 years in London working as a management consultant. Um, took over my dad's restaurant, which is a tiny 30-seater restaurant, which is maybe from here to here, 30-seater restaurant in Hamilton. Uh, developed a new brand, systems, processes, training, added a whole layer of professionalism onto it. And then within three years, I built the biggest takeaway kitchen in Britain. And that, uh, we had one meal being output, freshly cooked every 15 seconds. At 55 guys making food and churning out. This was a mega operation. And then we guaranteed delivery, guaranteed home delivery within 29 minutes for five years straight from 2010 to 2015. Nobody in the country has managed to do that as, as far as I'm aware. That, is, that was for us the epitome of operational excellence. Okay, uh, the white walls, every single wall in my office is white and the reason it's white is very simple. A few years ago, um, I appeared in a newspaper and I was delighted with that, so I put it up in the wall, happy. Then a few weeks later, I appeared um, in another magazine, yep, put it up in the wall, happy. And then it got to the point, our marketing was that slick, every wall in every room Every cupboard, every storage space, crates upon crates upon crates of publicity. And this was all generated in-house. We didn't have any agency working for us. So we're pretty slick. And then we were featured in all the major, all the major um, TV channels as well. Dozens of times over the years. So literally thousands of articles on me. So if you Google Ajmal Mushtaq or Mushtaq, you'll see... So there's a thing or two, there's a, there's a lesson behind this. And then one day I walked into the office and I thought, you know what, I'm sick of looking at myself. And I just ordered everything to be taken down and the walls to be painted white. So that's why the walls are white. Uh, okay, then I started, I sold Mushtaqs and then I started Boss Pizza. Um, the aim for Boss Pizza, I just started it full time in September. We've got four branches open. We've got 40 in the pipeline. The aim for Boss Pizza is we want to have hundreds of stores across the UK within the next seven years. So that's the business challenge. I'll just have very briefly about Boss Pizza. That's a brand, very slick. Um, we're developing some amazing technology um, that adds value to the business. And that's it. So that's 30 seconds about me. Right, takeaways for you. Who here has never seen me before or seen me on social media or heard of me? Everyone. <laughs> I think there's one guy in the back. Ian, the guy was with, uh, he's, uh, so thank you very much. Right. Okay, key takeaways, right? Who here is on TikTok? Who's got TikTok for their organization? Okay, um, and what do the rest of you think about TikTok? Fantastic. Is it just like a waste of time, do you think? Why are you not on TikTok? Someone tell me. I don't think it's used appropriately for All right, okay. Okay, anyone else? Like, what do you think? Who, who's, whoever's not using it, what do you think? We're not underutilized. Sorry? Associates underutilized by business. Underutilized, yep, yeah. okay. Okay, yeah. okay, fair enough, right?
Um, for you guys, um, take, being on TikTok is not uh, an option, it's a must, right? Um, and the way you be successful on TikTok is you should never sell your service on TikTok, right? Um, make it about your audience. This talk is about you. I started off by saying 30 seconds about me, the rest of the time is about you. That's exactly what you do on TikTok, that's how you win. So over, over a period of months, weeks, months, even six months, a year, you could actually have a phenomenal following. And you sell by not selling. That's the key thing on TikTok. Um, I've got 40 million views, 1 million likes. We're selling franchises all over the UK. We're getting 30 franchises, franchise inquiries per week. We, we can't manage that demand. We're getting 30 franchise inquiries per week and we aren't even selling the franchises. So that's the power of TikTok. So for you, look at this, establish credibility. You, if you're grooming dogs, for example, do such a great job, you know, give such good tips that people think, yeah, I want to follow this guy because he's so good at grooming dogs. And then if he creates a course or something, then people are going to come flocking to, to him. That, that's how you do it. Establish credibility. So get on TikTok, my friends. Next thing. Um, posting. You might have heard you need to post many times a day. Give me some numbers. How many times? Get all with the black hair at the very back. How many times a day are you posting? Um, Give me a number. One. One? Okay. Uh, gentleman here, blue shirt, how many times a day are you posting? 0 0.1. 0 0.1, okay, good. So 1 to 0 0.1. Any, any raise on 1? No? Okay. You should be posting 50 times per day. And I'm going to show you how we post 50 times a day. How long do you think it would take to post 50, 50 bits of content a day? How long should it take based on your experience? Give me a number. Minutes, hours, throw out some numbers. Sorry? All day. All day? Fair enough. A any anyone else? One hour. One hour? Okay. 15 minutes it takes us. And this is how we do it. This was yesterday's post. We've got a shop uh, in Lark Hall, second birthday party. So I just wrote that on the whiteboard, took a picture of it, uh, wrote the blurb. And then over here, we've got a, sh a spreadsheet. I've got the top 20 here. There's another 20 further down here, right? Every single platform is on the spreadsheet. On the spreadsheet is a link to that social media. So that's a link to my LinkedIn page, for example. Clicking that, pops up, copy, paste, add that image in, takes about 10 seconds, bang, done. Right, next, right, you just work your way down. Ajmal Mushtaq, personal, right, again, pop up Facebook post, picture, write the blurb, or copy and paste the blurb, post, five seconds. So this is a good way of doing it. And then we just, we just you know, color in the boxes as we're, go as, as we're going along. So you need to get posting like many times a day. If you can't do 50, do five, do three. You need to be posting every single day. And you might think, well, that doesn't make much difference. And you're all probably thinking that, right? But it's like going to the gym. I go to the gym once i'm not going to come back with like ripped muscles you know i'm a, and it's the same for you so if you go consistently consistently day in day out and after a, over a period of two three months you start to see the difference that's where you win take away number three something that something that no one has ever spoken about here you go mate there's 40 quid thanks very much what's your name scott scott 40 quid for you nice <laughs> I have never in my business life heard anyone talk about the definition of value. Right, so there's a the £10 that I just gave Scott. Scott, could you give me £10? If you give me £10, I'll give you £20. Thanks. That's great. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Would you like to do that again? Yes. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, give me £10, I'll give you £20. Thank you. That's great. 
Thanks very much. Again? Okay, yep. <laughs> we could do that. In fact, let's do it again. There's another 20. Right. Thank you. We could do that all day long, right? And see within, within 30 minutes, every one of you will be here wanting to do business with me. Ajmal, here's £10. Can you give me 20 Let me tell you about the thinking behind the scenes at Mushtax, my first business, how we managed to grow it to being the biggest. If we're selling £20 worth of stuff, we would cram £40 worth of value. You know, the service would be fast, the place would be slick, the phone operators are professionally trained, um, the food is really good quality, the portions are really big. If you had to get that, that £20 takeaway somewhere else, it would, it would be £40. That's one example. Another example, um, with all of the publicity, I established myself as... Uh, the UK's leading authority in the takeaway space. And I charge, I'm a, G, a council member with the GLG, which is a research company, and they've got links with all the global hedge fund managers. And I charge a thousand pounds an hour, right? So if you can picture me sitting at home with my legs up, earpods in, I'm on a call just talking, and I get paid a thousand pounds an hour for that. So these are hedge fund managers that are contacting me to understand the, the landscape in the UK takeaway space. You've got Just Eat, Delivery, but it's, it's a multi-billion pound sector and they're wanting to spend hundreds of millions of pounds, a thousand pounds an hour. And what I'm thinking is, right, I need to give you 2,000, at least 2,000 pounds worth of value to make it worth your while. So when that guy gets off the phone, he thinks, yeah, that, that was a really good call. Let's book him in for, for next quarter or let's book him in for next month. So whatever you're doing in your business, Start thinking about the value that you're adding to your customers. And if you're adding double what you're charging, that's my rule of thumb. If I'm charging £10, uh, I'm trying to deliver twice the value for that. So, really understand the power of the definition of value and see how you can interpret that for your business. If you want to follow me, uh, my name is at Ajmal Mushtaq on TikTok. Amanda, are we doing questions just now? Yeah, that's it. Are you sure? Yeah. Right, three, three, three key takeaways, right. and I've delivered them. That's great. Let's put our hands together first of all. Thank you. Right, we're now going to have our Q&A. And for those who haven't been to Thrive before, there is an etiquette Q&A. No shouting out, please. Um, everybody has to raise their hand. When they raise their hand, I will talk to them. They need to introduce themselves and say their name and their company because Ashmael's never been, doesn't know you all. Then when you've had your question, you've had your question because there's 59 other people in the room who might also have a question. So don't start a conversation with the speaker. That's for later. That's in your freestyle networking at 10.30. Right, I've got Alan and then I've got these two. So Alan, you kick off. Sorry, Alan, before you start, oh, I'm going to okay. say something. One of the greatest business questions I, was, have, I have ever been asked what, was at a Thrive event. Okay, great. Uh, and I'll just tell you because it was, it was that good, I have to reiterate it. <laughs> so my previous event, I was talking about success, millions of pounds, you know, great house, lifestyle, success, success, success. And there was a guy at the back and he put up his hand. He goes, <coughs> at the very end of the event, he goes, yeah, Ajmal, yeah, that's great. But is there a but? And I thought, what a great question. And that one question inspired me to talk about the hardships, the dark side, the struggles of business. So if, if, if you look at a lot of my content, probably about 80% of it is depressing. I'm talking about this, the struggles, <laughs> the hardship. It, it's not the check me in the Lambo or the Rolls Royce in front of a fancy house. It's not that. It, it's like the real struggles. So I'm hoping for some similar, you know, fascinating questions. I'm, right? sure, I'm sure we'll get them. Right, Alan, and also... Yes, I want you to do what Alan's doing. I want you to stand up because it's a big room and really project your voice. Oops, Thank sorry, you sorry. Much. First, I want you to say two guys from one bike and one from Cold Bridge. The one room is never an easy room. Talk through your social media content. Yep. How would you recommend expand that content if your industry is rather dry? Um, I mean, we do great things in value, but essentially, my work involves count work courses. How would you? Counting what, sorry? That's the way I put it. Um, but like the little arm on the top of a door? Exactly, yeah. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. Um, but, but just to give you an example of how dry it can be, it's actually capital, I just to do it 
Maxine, about this, can be done by dry community. What would you recommend to be able to expand our social media content to, to make it right. more interesting than okay. the industry, which is that dry? Okay, um, great question. You should not be the judge of your own content. I've been go doing content for many years. See the stuff in the early years that I thought resonates with the, the, the audience. Um, I was totally wrong. It was all about great business, the, the polished, the great business lessons. No one's interested in that. People want to see the real, the, the real nuts and bolts of business. So you might think it's dry. I'm telling you, that is no drier than a, a, a pizza being put in an oven traveling along a conveyor belt and coming out the other end. There'll be companies out there um, that are looking to buy your product. And if you're talking about the, the engineering process, you know, how, how great your packaging is, how great your service is, just start talking about your business. And don't you be the judge, let your audience be the judge. Some, some of the greatest videos that I've put out, I've thought, mm, nah, that, that, that's not gonna do well. And bang, it's got millions of views. And then the flip side, the videos that we think, oh, that's a great video. We spent a lot of effort on that. They flop. Don't be the judge. Great that's question. Great answer. We've got two questions over here. We've got Scott and Finn. Scott, do you want to go first? Yes. Scott, your first question is, are you going to keep the money? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll give it back to me. <laughs> Amanda, we need to be careful. I'll just spill some water there. Okay, right, Scott, go for it. No, that was it. It was just to check if you wanted your money. <laughs> <laughs> He's always ahead of us. Everyone, as I said, I've already said it, everyone should be on TikTok. You, it's not an option for you guys, it's a must. You've, you've got to walk out of here and think, right, what are we going to start doing on TikTok and just start doing it uh, consistently. Right, I've got one at the back, Zoe, and then Karen. So Zoe, do you want to stand up and project your voice? Yeah, I'm Zoe Ferra from Social Media, and I just wanted to talk about, you were talking about value and doubling your value, so I have a Good, very good point, very good question. How do you give value, for example, and it cuts into your profit margins? One of the ways that I grew uh, my businesses to being the success as, you know, they achieved is by not being greedy. I kept the profit margins around about seven, eight percent net, and the rest of the money I put back into marketing the business or put back into delivering value for the customers. And I think where a lot of businesses get, get it wrong is their profit margins are too chunky. And that's, good. that's great for you, but see your customer on the other end of the table, they're going to think, is that all right or is that good? And we've all done it. I'm paying, a, a, I'm paying an agency at the moment, like £3,000 a month, and within one month I'm thinking, you're not even worth it. As soon as the contract ends, it's finished. So keep the profit margins low-ish and reasonable and don't get too greedy. That's a strategy that's worked for me. Great point. Great. And then we have a question from Karen, wherever she is. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Just going back to TikTok, actually, yep. how relevant do you think influencers are? Um, yeah, how relevant? Aye. For a business. I, th I think influencer marketing is huge. Uh -huh. uh, it can be good. So if someone comes along and they review your business and you get <coughs> like hundreds of thousands of views and you can turn a few of those into sales, I mean, is that, is that, is that not a good thing? Um, potentially. Um, are they relevant? Yeah, no, I, th I think, I think th th they're growing. But the one thing that I don't be is I don't be a motivational speaker and, and I'm not looking to be an influencer. I'm a pizza operator and that's all I'm focused on. Yes. And see the minute you try to, to weave in some salesy stuff, people just turn off straight away. So uh, just be authentic to yourself. All right, that's great. I think Russell had a question and then we'll have um, Andrew. Thanks, Anna. Um, a great presentation, thank you. Uh, Russell Lowton from St. James's Place. Um, I'm interested, uh, 
do you have, um, or you're, you're going for 1,500 um, mm -hmm. uh, um, operations within the UK, you, you are s sort of driven by providing double the value mm -hmm. uh, to, the, to, to the business that you generate. How, how do you ensure that everyone, if you've got so many sites, are, are all sort of uh, doing the same thing, yep. delivering that double value? How are you ensuring this of everyone? A great question. Systems, processes, training, reiterating that week in, week out. That's how I started my first business. That's how I established my first business. We had weekly meetings every week, Saturday, four o'clock. We had a management meeting, full team meeting, and we're just rehearsing the same thing over and over and over again. And that 1,500 branches, I'll tell you now, we're never going to reach that, but we will reach seven, eight, nine hundred. So the 1,500 pound is, is, is the big, crazy vision but I know for a fact we'll probably end up around about six, seven, eight, nine hundred. Great answer. I think Andrew had a question. Yeah, I was interested to, to understand, you, you made a pivot there in terms of the, the you, you've gone into pizzas, mm -hmm. and from the outside that was like an incredibly busy market. Yes. Everyone in here can name three or four yep. very yes. established brands that have done incredibly well mm -hmm. at a franchise level and, and a non-franchise um, um, experience. Why pizza? Nobody is offended by a slice of pizza. <laughs> you take Indian food, you take a group of 10 people, there's going to be at least one person that says, oh, I don't fancy spicy food. You take Mexican food or Chinese food or any sushi food or any, any food in the world, any cuisine, there's always one person uh, that can put the handbrake on that night out and make the team go somewhere else. So no one is offended by a slice of pizza. One, and number two, it's a multi-billion pound market. So it made sense to go into that market. And third, the third reason is, we're already in the Indian food space. We're dealing with dough, naan bread dough. So we're experts in dough management. So it's fairly easy to make the transition. I like that. Experts in right, great. Uh, Rachel from Vizenda. Not even looked at it, but see when I see an AI post, I can spot it a mile off. So use AI, but then you've got to cast your eye over it. So if you post, if you ask AI to generate a post, it's gonna sound nothing like what you would write. Um, you, I can spot it a mile away, and if I can spot it a mile away, the chances are other people can do that as well. So I don't really use it. Quite simple, um, keep it authentic, keep it real, and there, there will be AI tools that are really useful in terms of um, it can help streamline you know, some processes, definitely use it. But for the crux of my content, I don't use it. Fantastic. Right, one last question. Malcolm. Thanks. That was really interesting. Um, my business is employee benefits. It's mm -hmm. largely consultancy. So your example of being able to post um, 50 times a day and offer discounts and pizza and stuff, I mean, appreciate that really works in your, in your offering. But I can't see how that's practical for lots of people in this room. Because there isn't a there isn't a product that people can access quickly and pay you two quid for to, to, to you know to respond to that offer. So I'm, I'm just a bit intrigued as uh, We can take this offline and I'm happy to bet you my house so that I can make a difference to your business. Yes. <laughs> I knew that was what you'd say. It's the, it's the principle, isn't it? It's the principle. Yeah. And I've got it's an okay size house. <laughs> <laughs> Can we put our hands together for Agile and don't go away? No, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Oh, super. Thank you. This is a big thank you. There is a £50 voucher oh. for tea experiences. So don't just you know, oh, put that in the bin. Fantastic. Two amazing That's uh, so kind, Amanda. The lady to talk to in the white, in the white oh, top. Oh, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very great. much. It's been a great audience. Cheers. Thank you so much. And just be careful. There's a little bit of water here. <laughs>